Hello fellow Kenyans, I am Onyango Paul Komolo. You can call me PK, a young political analyst. I want to comment about the latest political happenings in our great nation. In terms of the two leading presidential aspirants, that is His Excellency William Samai Ruto and uh, the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga. Number one, in terms of messaging, give it to William Samuel Ruto. He is leading because his messaging resonates well with the people. Many people are buying into the idea of bottom-up economic model, whether they themselves understand it or not, but the manner in which he brings it out is quite well, and uh, I love it for a fact. Number two, in terms of numbers, his Excellency William Samuel Ruto has three former provinces, that is Rift Valley, Central Region, and the Northeastern. Give the three to him. On the other hand, give the right on Raila Molodinga, Nyanza, Western, Coast, Eastern, and Nairobi. He also takes an early lead in the five. Going by the traditional voting style along the ethnic and regional mobilization, then there are high chances that Raila could be having more numbers towards 2022, August 9th general election. Finally, I want to comment about the political goodwill. In terms of political goodwill, this is where William Samoy Ruto has a very, very disadvantaged position. You cannot have your cake and eat it, as the president once put it. He is in government and is fighting the same government that he is in. And therefore, it becomes a challenge to convince the Mount Kenya people that he is going to have their interest at heart, because if he can fight their own son, then the Mount Kenya people, especially the Mount Kenya Forum, which you can't just wish away that they are billionaires sitting in hotels. You can't just wish them away. So this political goodwill, this is what Raila has been lacking in the past. He has been having the messaging. He has been rationating well with the people. He has been able to gather numbers that can propel him to presidency, but he has never had political goodwill from the Mount Kenya people. And for the first time in the history of this nation, they are all indicators that he could have some good support from Mount Kenya. And eventually, this is likely to propel him to presidency. And therefore, the Hustler nation must watch out. Otherwise, they should be ready for Raila presidency. And that is why it is easier to say Raila the fifth than saying Ruto the fifth. Ruto may need another 10 years for him to be manufactured into a president, as Uru did between 2002 and 2013. Thank you, and may God bless you. Let's all subscribe to grow this channel together. That is the Herman Manoras channel. My name is Onyango Paul Komolo, young political analyst. God bless you. Hello, Professor Herman. Hello, Jadiel. Hello, viewers. This is Josiah Kokal, a Kenyan in diaspora talking to you from Ecuador, South America. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to contribute to the debate through your channel. I would now want to talk only about two things. The first issue is, the, is narratives as a political capital. Narratives do not have to be true. Narratives do not have to be based on factual evidence. The important thing about narratives is how well they are constructed, peddled, and sold. And this said, I think, Pre Vice President Ruto has uh, constructed some very formidable narratives that he has peddled, especially in the Mount Kenyan region. One of these narratives is that based on handshake which advances the view that during the first Jubilee government, a lot, a lot was achieved. And Ruto has gone around parading all these projects that were achieved and attributing to himself the success of these projects. According to him, the second Jubilee government has been a flop because it stalled 
due to the handshake or due to the entry of Raila Odinga in the political scene. According to this narrative, Ruto is no longer part of the government during this second jubilee uh, period. Now, and this is where the game will get trickier for William Ruto. Uhuru has been aloof. He hasn't spoken about these narratives or against these narratives. But now that Uhuru has shown Kenyans that his intent on stopping Ruto, I think there will be counter-narratives from the Uhuru side. And I think this will resonate well because they'll be accompanied by evidence, by parading all those projects that have been achieved during the second Jubilee government. The infrastructure in central Kenya, in the Mount Kenyan region, this will be Uhuru's political capital. And I think this will uh, make Ruto's narratives fall apart. Second issue I wanted to talk about is corruption and its role in our politics. Unfortunately, I have to say, I have to admit that my country has normalized corruption. And uh, it seems you don't have to be corruption free in order to be entrusted with an office. And I think this is due to two things. First of all, corruption narratives seem to emerge stronger during campaign seasons. They are stage managed, they are mud slinging uh, mechanisms. And in the public view, I think corruption cases are just political narratives. This has been the case of Kimwarer, Aram, uh, or Aror Dam issues, the COVID millionaires. The second reason why this has been normalized is our legal judicial system. If it's true that Rotich fell as a minister due to, a da, uh, to these uh, Aror and Kimware Dam issues, but the cases built about against him never succeeded, or we don't know what happened, they didn't proceed. And this only contributes to fuel the political narrative theory. And so many other cases I think we could cite in this, uh, in this sense. Now, all this said, I think corruption or corruption cases and narratives are more of a political and social capital to Rai Lodinga than to Ruto. Ruto has been adversely mentioned many and many a time. I think uh, corruption seems to have little bearing on swing the electorate, but I think as narratives they favor more Raila than Ruto himself. All this said, on my personal opinion, I think Raila's trajectory as a politician, as human rights champion, his life sacrificed for Kenyans, I think his trajectory puts him as a safer bet for Kenya than William Ruto. Hi, Hama Manyora. How are you doing? I hope you are fine. My name is Ismail Idris and I'm a regular viewer of your channel. Yeah, and I subscribe to your channel too. So I want to elaborate on why I honestly think Raila Amolo Odinga will become the next president of Kenya come 2022. And my opinion is entirely subjective. Without uh, wasting time, let me get into the ideas. And number one is numbers. So I will tackle this question of numbers through the lens of traditional audience. 
Now, traditional audience in political science means that they constitute a group of followers who actually vote for a particular candidate throughout the electioneering period, and they never change their allegiance to that kind of person. Now, in 1997, Raila Molodinga came third with a total vote of 66,000, no, 667,000 fo uh, followers. I choose to call them followers because they are actually followers. And in 2007, Raila Molodinga came third with 4.3 million. 2013, he came second again with 5.3 5.3 million votes. And in 2017, 2017 he came second again with 6.8 million. Now the thing here is you can see Raila Molodinga's following actually goes up. It doesn't go down. It is very difficult or it is very rare for any type of politician to maintain that kind of consistency every election throughout. Now, the rationality of why Raila Amolodinga has this kind of numbers, I came to find out is because he has been campaigning in each and every part of Kenya. It creates what you call familiarity. Now, familiarity is when the, the people in the ground actually become familiar with you. Why? Because you, you are there like all the time. Even now when the elections, we arrive to the election period, people will actually remember the guy who actually has visited them most of the time. And they will tend to vote for that kind of person. Now, to be fair to Ruto, he doesn't have that kind of numbers. Although he's trying very hard to create a perception that he has the numbers and is trying to do to do this kind of or to achieve this perception by engineering exodus from jubilee party to his party but actually i don't think that is like the real thing that is happening i remember hama manyora in a in a recent interview i don't remember the actual uh, media you said that ruto is actually sitting on a chair and the and the pillars of the chair chairs are actually the mount kenya votes now if you break these pillars of those chairs ruto falls down now the second reason why i think raila molodinga will become the next president of kenya is is what we call in political science the preferential accommodation now what this entirely means is that you take the preference of the audience or the followers then you merge it together with the ideologies of your party for example Raila Amol Odinga has been talking about the social welfare program whereby the people living within the uh, informal sector or the low in economic bracket they will receive 6,000 Kenya shillings every month I think that is possible. Now, Turuto, of course, he has been talking about the Tutaweka uh, Bilioni Hamsini, Kwa Mambo Ya Biashara, Mambo Ya Mamamboga, Carpenter, Naole Watu Afanyekazi. But I've come to ask myself, how are you going to, to get that kind of money? Some people will believe him, but majority of people, I don't think. So his preferential accommodation it will be, it's going to be very difficult for him. Now my third and final reason revolves around the subject of popularism. Because if you look, if you judge it by the lens of uh, popularism, approval and acceptability, Raila ticks every box. Now people have been calling Raila sort of names, like for example he's a Luo Kingpin. But for me, I don't subscribe to that kind of ideology because it is a absolutely a logical fallacy. Raila is actually a kingpin to every community. Why? Because if you are known to every community, you actually become sort of a kingpin to them. So for me, instead of calling Raila a, a kingpin of a low kingpin, I, I, I should actually call him a statement. 
You see, because of democracy, how he has fought for democracy. Now, for Raila, it is a big plus for him. And that is why I think Raila Molodinga will become the next president of Kenya. Thank you very much.